How's it going guys, it's Zuko, and today we are fulfilling a yearly obligation. It's the beginning of 2024, which means we have to talk about the anime figures that I've pre-ordered for the remainder of the year. Now this year, the video is gonna be broken up into two sections. Part one, the figures that I've actually pre-ordered, and part two, the figures that I want but for one reason or another, I decided not to jump on them. It might be the price, I might be able to save money down the line, or I'm just undecided at the moment. Also, check this out. I got these Pikmin wind-up toys from the Nintendo store in Japan. I really want to open these. I might just decide to do that while making this video. It's a box of six, but you're not guaranteed all six. I don't know why they would do that. That seems pretty asinine to me, but I'm going to be very salty if I don't get a Bulbor because that's what I want and there's two different variants in this box so I don't know if I don't open this right now I'll do it next time but I really want to see what I get for now we should talk about what I've actually pre-ordered but I can't even start with January yet because I'm waiting on three figures from December so let's talk about the last few figures from 2023 that I still need to get my hands on all right, so first up we have a Nendoroid of K-Angel from Needy Streamer Overload. This character has three figures on the market right now, a scale figure from Apex, a pop-up parade, and this Nendo. However, I just feel like the Nendoroid represents the character and the series the best out of all three, and I just think it's adorable. I need that rainbow vomits. It's great. Next up is Dawn from Pokemon Platinum. Now, this figure feels a little unnecessary just considering I already have the first Dawn figure, which is essentially perfect for what it is, but I don't know. I mean, Pokemon Platinum is like one of the best games in the series, if you ask me. And also Turchwig is a very compelling argument. Who doesn't love Turchwig? But yeah, I feel like I'm not gonna keep both of these figures. Eventually, I think I'm gonna sell one of them, but I just wanna see both of them firsthand and then I can decide from there. And last for December is Neru from Blue Archive. Now, this one is made by Spirit Tail and costs about 24,000 yen. And I think this figure is awesome. There's like a scenario playing out with this figure with like the broken glass on the base, the chips, the cards. It's very messy down there. It's got her guns. Her souvenir jacket looks awesome. Honestly, I just think her character design is sick. So I really wanted to pick this one up. However, I decided to buy her from Otaku Mode because they had a really good deal on her or at the very least, it was the best price that I could find. Unfortunately, they decided to delay this figure for a month, at least, and I don't know why, so everybody else is enjoying this figure. Meanwhile, I have to wait, and that's not the first time that's gonna probably happen to me, which is annoying. All right, we're doing it. Let's see what we got. First up, it's the Blowhog. I mean, he's a classic. He's been in every game, right? So yeah, they're toys, you wind them up, and I guess they walk, I don't know, can you see that? Is that on camera? I don't even know if that's on camera, but uh, there you go. All right, finally moving on to January. First up is another Nendoroid, one of three that I've pre-ordered this year. I'm really trying to cut back here, if you could tell. But uh, I decided to buy Zutomayo's Nirachan. This one is very unique looking to me. I love her giant blocky fingers and her big ass shoes. It's a really cute looking Nendoroid too. The art style is fantastic. And I also just really love the band. So this one just felt like a no-brainer. I'm pretty sure I pre-ordered her immediately. I didn't even think about it because it was just too cute. And I love the little porcupine guy you get with this Nendoroid too. He's great. Next up is Guilty Gear Strive's Bridget, also from Spirit Tail. This one also costs about 24,000 yen. And I also bought this one from Otaku Mode. So I doubt I'm gonna be getting this in January. This Bridget's design is pretty much ripped straight from Guilty Gear Strive, which I really have no problem with. I think it's a very cute pose as she's kind of strutting along. She's holding on Roger. I think it's great. They added a lot of flourishes to the base, which they didn't really need to. And the paint job, the shading looks so much better than most Spirit Tail figures that I like had to see it for myself. I kind of don't believe it'll actually look this good. But if it does, I'll be very impressed. I hope it does for sure, because I did buy it already. I put the money down. But I don't know, in the back of my head, I just find this very unbelievable. And last up for January is Bomber Girls Aqua, the vampire negligee version. Now this one is devilishly expensive at around 36,000 yen. Amakuni's prices are not great. And also it's exclusive to AmiAmi, Ami, so good luck finding a discount unless it bargain bins, which hey, it might considering it's still up for pre-order but it is also tied to one store only. 
so I don't really know what's gonna happen. I think the best way to describe this figure would be blue. This figure is extremely blue and also very cartoony, a bit exaggerated with the expressions and also pretty risque at the same time. You know, Bomber Girl is just kind of like that, but I hope I don't regret it because this one's really gonna hurt the wallet. All right, this one better not be another blow hog. Oh, hell yeah. We got a Bulborb. He's so cute. That shit's awesome. Man, I'm in a good mood now. But anyway, let's move on to February, a short but sweet month. Two figures, technically three, but I'll explain in a minute. First up is Maka from Soul Eater. Now this is just a pop-up parade, but I'll take what I can get. As somebody who missed out on that one Medicom figure, it's like 500 plus dollars now. Honestly, doesn't even look that good if you ask me. Very, very happy that Good Small Company actually made a figure from Soul Eater because why don't we get more of them, right? It's a classic at this point. And it just feels like we missed the train when it came to figures, which sucks because, you know, Fire Force is out now and that gets a ton of figures. So it just feels like if, you know, Soul Eater came out now, that would have happened. And then the other figure I bought this month was none other than Mio's Figma. Of course I had to buy Mio's Figma. In fact, I bought two of Mio's Figma. Did I need to buy two? Yeah, I absolutely did. Should have bought three but I settled on two for now. I might actually make a solo review for her. I haven't done that in a while, but it feels very on brand for this channel, even though it's just a Figma. Nothing against Figma. I just typically don't talk about them to that extent. Really like the spread of accessories here, even giving us a long haired option. Feels very complete. The flute, the weapons, the diary. Like I don't really know what else I would ask for in terms of a Figma. So I'm extremely happy. All they need to do is make sure that the quality is good and the posability is decent. Her skirt might get in the way of that though, but I'll forgive them. Also, where the hell's the scale? We'll, we'll talk about that next month. Anyway, that's it for February. Moving on to March, this is a very small month. Only one figure pre-ordered that is Futaba from Persona 5. This one is made by Fat Company, cost about 15,000 yen, extremely cheap. This is a re-release, actually. I have to assume this was somewhat more expensive on the aftermarket, like most Persona 5 figures. But yeah, after playing Royal, I decided I wanted a couple of figures from this series, or this game, rather, because I would like some from Persona 3 as well. Haven't played 4 yet. But uh, yeah, I don't want to go too hard or anything. So these cheaper figures, like, you know, the Futaba and the Kasumi that I talked about a couple of months ago, that's pretty good for me. There's one other that I have pre-ordered, but we'll talk about that when we get to that month. But yeah, I've never really been a big fan of her uh, Phantom Thieves outfit, the navigation suit. I just don't really like that look. So her typical, I don't know, casual clothes, I think is a much cooler look for her. And that's why I wanted this one. We got a Bulbor, but I'm not gonna stop. This one is the bird. I actually don't know the bird's name, hold on. This thing is called a Downy Snagret. Okay, he's got one giant ass foot though, so I don't know how he moves about. Oh my god. <laughs> well, there he is. All right, April's a little bigger though. Two of the figures, I actually don't know if I'm gonna end up getting them. I'll explain in a second. But first up, we have Power from Chainsaw Man by Amakuni. Now, this is probably the most overpriced figure in my opinion that I pre-ordered. Actually, that might not even be true, but it feels kind of like a ripoff when I look at this figure, but I do want power figures. I'm a huge Chainsaw Man fan and I love power, you know? I love the design of it, right? The casual clothes that power has, the expression on her face, she is so arrogant looking, and the hammer has an amazing paint job and all the cracks running through it. The sculpt of this figure, even like her fingers look really good. I think Amakuni will deliver on this figure Year, but is it really worth that much? I, I don't know. But yeah, I'm kind of on the fence with this one. I'll probably keep my pre-order, but I am questioning if this one is worth it, even though I do think just overall she looks fantastic. And then also from Chainsaw Man, I decided to pre-order Eastream's Makima. Now this one is also very expensive. I don't even know if I said how expensive power was. It was on screen for sure but she's 27,500. This Makima figure is around that 28,000, 29,000, something like that. Very expensive, but Eastream just is. And while I do feel I'm overpaying for this Makima figure a little bit, just based on like what you're actually getting, 
I gotta say, this is easily the best Makima figure to date. Like, when I think of Makima, this is what comes to mind. It just feels like they nailed her personality. And if you got the pre-order bonus faceplate, you get this, like, slightly more sinister look, which I did end up doing. And I'll probably display the figure that way, just because it looks a little bit better to me. But even without it, I do feel like just this look in general nails Makima. I mean, the trench coat look is just really strong, and then you cover it in blood, it looks phenomenal. If she had some blood on her face, I think that would be even better, but I'm not gonna complain too much. I think this figure looks outstanding, and I'm very excited to get this one, even if it is a little expensive, in my opinion. And then as for our last figures of April, I decided to pre-order these two Bochi the Rock figures of Hitori, where she's like a little blob and a snake. I just thought they would be kind of funny to have like behind me on a shelf, but I pre-ordered these at Right Stuff. And Right Stuff is gone. They've been absorbed by Crunchyroll, and I never really found out what happened to my pre-orders. I should probably double check on that, but right now it just feels like they're in limbo to me. So I don't actually know if I'm gonna end up with these two figures, but that would be very upsetting to me because they're very goofy and I like that. All right, we're three for three on these little guys. Next up is the other Bulborb, specifically known as the Orange Bulborb. He's cool. I like him. I got the two ones that I wanted. Maybe my friend was wrong and you do get all six in a box. I mean, that would make sense, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna wind this one up. We already know how he moves. Moving on to May, it's another small month, very similar to February, actually, where first up, we have the pop-up raid for Amechan from Needy Streamer Overload. Now, I wish he got a Nendoroid instead, but I'm not gonna complain, because I've been asking for a figure of this character ever since they started making K-Angel figures. And you know what? Despite not getting the Nendo, the pop-up parade does look very cute. So I'm just happy that I'm getting anything for Amechan. And then I'm also getting Figma Emmy from Metroid Dread. Now, if you watched my unboxing of Samus from Metroid Dread, you would know that I absolutely loved how that one turned out. So I'm very excited to see what they do with Emmy. I doubt it's gonna look as good, but from what I remember, the articulation is like a highlight of Emmy. Like they really wanted to focus on that. So I hope he's very fun to mess around with, but I will say they should have made Ravenbeak instead but that's just me. Now, June is the month I go broke, or I would have if I didn't pay off some of this stuff already, but it's the biggest month for me this year, and we have quite a lot of nice things to show for it. First up, though, very cheap figure. You're getting a pop-up parade for Rebecca from Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Now, originally, I had her Nendo pre-ordered, but I never really liked it. I just wanted a figure of her. So when I saw this pop-up parade, I decided to like swap the pre-orders. I just think it looks a little bit more like her, feels more like the character. So I think this is the better go for me. Though with Max Factory making that weird bubblegum pink runner figure, maybe that one will be my favorite. I'm not sure yet. They haven't put it up for pre-order, even though apparently it's done. It's gonna look like that exactly, but they're just waiting for some reason. I, I don't know. Uh, but I definitely want more information on that thing. Next up, we have our final Nendoroid of this year. It's Alexander from Elden Ring. He comes with a little jar kid, forget his name, uh, and also like a slab of meat, which is just an item from the game. It's a pre-order bonus too, which is a little annoying. You don't really get much with this guy considering he has no face and like the only accessory really is that jar kid. You can cross his arms if you want, which of course is a very iconic pose. Uh, but really, you're paying for the detail of just like the jar texture and the paint. So it's fine. You know, if you like Elden Ring, you'll love Alexander because everybody loves Alexander. So making a little cute Nendoroid of him just seems like a no-brainer, and I'm happy. We'll also be getting to Kemi from Persona 5. Now, this is a re-release from Amakuni. It's very expensive, in my opinion, for 22,000 yen. Now, that's not the highest price tag we've seen today, but the original run was around like 14 to 15,000, something like that. It's not that old of a figure, so it feels like Amakuni is kind of just, once again, taking advantage of a very popular character and series. Now, I still want this because I like Takemi a lot. Like, I'll be honest, as soon as I met Takemi, I just went to Amiyami and pre-ordered the figure. Like, I had no restraint. They got me. They got me with the sexy nurse character, but what can you do? 
Next up, actually, is a first four figures figure of Samus from Metroid Prime. Now, this one has been slowly paid off, which I'm very happy about, so that I don't have to worry about it in June. Though this figure only cost me about $150, it's like 11 inches high, I just think Samus looks awesome here. I've really regretted not picking up any of their other statues of Samus, because there's so many. And like the one for Metroid Prime 2, which looks very similar to this figure, is one of my holy grails. That thing looks outstanding, I have a friend who owns it, and I'm always so jealous when I see it in his Detolf. But I, I just think this thing looks great. I love the metallic paint job that they gave Samus. The colors are super vibrant. And I love the pose too. I think there's two of them uh, and both look very cool. So I, I don't even know which one I like more, but very excited to get this because my collection missing Samus and Metroid merchandise is just a sin in my eye. So I really need to fix that. And this is gonna help. June is the month where I also get another power figure. This one is made by S-Fire. And I believe it cost me around $200 to $10, something like that. I bought it from the Global Store, which was probably a good idea because the shipping will likely be a bit expensive on this one considering the base has a ton of her weapons made out of blood. And I think out of like all the designs I've seen of power figures, this one is my favorite. I'm just unsure if S-Fire can deliver on the quality because this will be my first figure from them. In fact, they haven't even made that many figures to this date, so I don't really have an opinion of them yet. But composition-wise, I think it looks fantastic. This is such a cool figure visually, and they nailed her expression. It looks just like Power. You get Meowy with this figure, which is a bonus because the other Power figure I bought doesn't have Meowy, and everybody loves Meowy. And this is a figure of Power where she's also in her work clothes, if you would call it that. Now, that's not uncommon in the world of figures, but for me, I don't have that yet. So that's kind of one of the reasons that compelled me to pre-order this figure of her. So we're almost done with June, but we got two more figures left, and they're both very expensive if you ask me. First up is Romelia Scarlet from Toho. Now this one is made by Alter. She's gonna cost about 35,000 yen for a 1 8 scale, that's absurd. But her sister Flandre ended up becoming like one of my favorite figures ever. That is a perfect figure if you ask me. It is phenomenal. So I have no doubts with this figure. I had to pick up Romelia. This is going to be in my top five of the year for sure, I would be very surprised if it's not, because Flandre's probably like number one or two. It's a very similar figure to Flandre, like the setup is exactly the same, but their clothes are different, their wings are different, the colors are different. Honestly, I think I like the colors more on Romelia, which is surprising, but man, the paint job on Romelia just looks like special to me. I, I don't know how to describe it. It just looks insane. And then last up for June, we just talked about this guy. It's Artorius from Dark Souls made by Gecko. Now, I don't really believe that this guy will come out in June, because that's six months away. And this thing is absurdly detailed and painted to perfection, 75 individual pieces or something like that, which they mention in their blog. But he also costs like 98,000 yen to compensate for a 1-6 scale made of PVC. It's absurd. I don't feel good <laughs> about pre-ordering this guy, but I think when I get it, I'm gonna be happy. I spent a lot of my last video talking about this figure, so I'm gonna keep this brief. I'm not really gonna get into the details. However, Gecko has always delivered with every single figure I've picked up from them, and this is like the coolest character in Dark Souls, so it's like, I know I would have regretted it if I didn't pick this up. Um, I ended up getting him for like $614 on Hobby Genki just because they had a, um, like a 15% off deal during New Year's. But yeah, like I said, I spent like eight minutes talking about this figure in our pre-order roundup for December. So check that out if you wanna hear more about this guy from me. Can't forget about my Pikmin. Here we have the frog. Okay, I, I think I got them all. I just know this guy's gonna hop like crazy. Stop falling, buddy. That's pretty cool. You know what, while we're at it, let's just find out about the last one. Yeah? I got them all. Okay, my friend's a liar, but I mean, I'm happy. This is the uh, iridescent flint beetle. You like throw Pikmin. Oh shit, I think I broke it. His antenna, oh no. Man, that bums me out, his antenna broke. I mean, it's my fault, I was being a little rough. I, I didn't realize these pieces were so fragile. I could probably glue it, but uh, I'll put him over there for now. 
Anyway, moving on, here we have July. Only one figure, but might be one of the best of the year. Here we have Chun-Li from Street Fighter, made by Max Factory, a 1-6 scale for about 33,000 yen. Now, I think this is the best Chun-Li figure ever made. I've never seen a better looking one to this date, and I've seen a lot of them. Most of the time, they don't look that good, but the best ones are always based off of like artwork from Capcom's art team. And this figure just so happens to be designed by Akiman, who has been with Street Fighter since Street Fighter 2. So the man's a legend, and he produced such a pretty piece of artwork for this figure of Chun-Li that when Max Factory painted this figure, I was instantly in love. It is such a beautiful looking figure. It's kind of insane because I've never been the biggest fan of Chun-Li. I love Street Fighter, but I just don't really pick her. I'm not really interested in playing the character. I mean, don't get me wrong, Chun-Li is fantastic, but I usually only connect with fighting game characters if I play them, and I've really never picked Chun-Li, but here I am pre-ordering a figure that's 33,000 yen. That's not cheap. But I just cannot get over how nicely painted and shaded this figure is. And it's also just like such a good pose too, very chill, very relaxed. It's like right after a fight or something. And I think it's really funny that you get this very tiny, cheap little bottle. I, I don't even know why they give you that. Personally, I wouldn't have included it because I think it kind of stands out in a negative way. So I probably won't display the figure with that water bottle. However, everything else is like 10 out of 10 across the board. I am so eager to get this one that it's not even funny. This is going to be one of the best figures I own, period. Now, surprisingly, there is nothing for August, nothing for September. We're just gonna skip those months. I got nothing pre-ordered, but we move on to October, and that's when we get three more figures. Now, first up is Hitori from Bochi the Rock. This is the Good Smile Company version, and we've talked about this one a lot. It keeps getting mentioned in my videos. I think it's nice. It's a very subtle, simple little figure. I think Good Small Company painted it really nicely. Love the colors, but it's really just Hitori standing there. There's really not much to talk about. Uh, it's a very cheap figure at like 14,000 yen, which was one of the reasons I wanted to pick it up. But there is one more figure of Hitori that I kind of want that I'm gonna talk about in the next section coming up. So I'm gonna talk about Hitori a little bit more then. But another figure that I'm very excited to get this month is none other than Flandre from the Toho Vania line, made by Q's Q, cost me about 21,000 yen. I just talked about Alters Flandre and how perfect I think that figure is, and yet here I am pre-ordering another figure of her. I mean, the two figures are very different, so I don't think that's a problem, but this new figure of her, this super stylized, darker version of Flandre, is just so unique to me that I had to add it to my collection, right? Like she just looks insane. There is something wrong with this character and I love that. And the paint job too, how dirty her dress is, the dark shadows for the creases, right? The vibrancy of the red, the cool effect swirl on the bottom. This figure has everything for me. This is a line of figures that I'm always going to buy if they continue to make more. And this just seems like another like near perfect figure from Q's Q, so I'm very excited. And then our last figure, not only for October, but the year as well, just so happens to be Aegis from Persona 4, the Ultimax, the fighting game. Now, this one is being made by Ikrea, who originally was a sculptor, but decided to open up their own company, I suppose. I don't know all the details. Uh, this figure is very expensive at like 30 to 33,000 yen. It has a nice light up feature in the, um, the Papillon heart. I think that's how you pronounce it. It is a sick design. This is the coolest Igus figure to date. I really like how this one looks. You know, as somebody who makes YouTube videos, I think this one would be a cool figure to talk about, just considering the circumstances. But even if I wasn't making YouTube videos, this would still be a figure that I would want in my collection eventually. I was just a little hesitant on the price tag, but I just think she looks awesome. The way her hair is like flowing up, just seeing all of that mechanical detail. There's like really subtle creases running throughout the white portions of her. And then also the base is very involved. There's like a huge red girder sticking out of a bunch of broken rocks. It's awesome. I need this figure. I hope it turns out good. If it looks like this prototype, I'm gonna be extremely happy, but we won't know until the end of the year, but I'm very eager to get it. So yeah, that's gonna do it for our pre-orders for 2024. But it doesn't mean we're done yet because we also have 2025 to talk about. Now there's not much. However, there's two very, very nice statues that are coming out in February that are probably going to be 
the best thing in my collection. And these are the two Prime One Studios Guts and Griffith figures in like the art selection line. Now, both of them are like, I think it's like $600 each, maybe 500, 550. There was some kind of deal going on if you bought both of them from the store directly. And there was also like a pre-order bonus for an extra faceplate or headpiece, which I'm not like super concerned about because the helmets are the way to go with this design. However, as you could see from the images that you're looking at, these two are literally works of art. Like, I don't know how to describe them other than that. It feels like I shouldn't be allowed to buy them. Like, they should be locked away in a museum. They're that special. Now, these statues are based off of official art. You might have seen it before. It's pretty much a one-to-one -one translation, which just blows my mind. I don't know how this concept works as a statue, as something in 3D. But Prime One Studios managed to pull it off and it's kind of mind blowing, right? It's left me speechless every time I've seen these two. Like when I saw them go up for pre-order, this is something I normally wouldn't buy, but I felt like I had to. I think I read somewhere that they were both limited to 1200 pieces each. So I can't imagine many are floating around. Uh, hopefully if this is the first time you're seeing these two and you really want them, you can hunt them down, but we got time. The year has just begun. I'm sure they'll pop up somewhere if you missed out. But that is going to do it for my pre-orders for 2024 and the beginning of 2025. All right, so like I said in the beginning of this video, this section is gonna focus on some figures that are already up for pre-order, yet I haven't decided if I want them yet, or if I do, I wanna get them for a better price. First up, we have Ariel from So I'm a Spider, So What? Now this figure came out last month, so I could buy it now if I wanted to but it just feels a little too expensive. I don't think there is any hype behind this figure, but she looks beautiful. I really like the design of this girl. I've never watched a single episode of this show, so I'm just gonna consider it an OC if I do buy her, but it really just comes down to her design. I think she's very pretty. I love the outfit that she's wearing, the weird cape with like the six tentacles with the diamonds on them. I don't really understand it. She's got hot pants on, her top is very small, and it's Amakuni, so the quality is fantastic, but she's also 25,000 yen, so, you know, I don't really want to jump on that when I have all of these other figures coming out. But if she drops in price, this will be picked up. Next up is Bremerton Kung Fu Cruiser, made by Alter. This one will be in the collection as soon as it drops in price. I'm gonna be very salty if it doesn't, just because every Azur Lane figure does drop in price, and this is like the only one, besides one other, that I want to pick up. Bremerton's great. She's my favorite Azur Lane character. I don't have many, because I don't play the game, but she's just like captured my heart. I, I love this character. So I would like to add her to the collection as soon as she's cheaper. Next up is Angela from Trials of Mana. Honestly, I thought this figure was gonna be canceled. Reese did so bad that I thought they just scrapped the project for Angela. Yet, she went up for pre-order last year and I was so disappointed. Like, she looks beautiful in terms of like the paint. Like, I love the way they painted her outfit and the hair, like the gradients are so pretty. But they messed up her face so much that I just can't pre-order it. I just don't see Angela in this figure and it's so upsetting because she is such a good character. I love her design but it's just not meant to be. And I know a lot of people share my opinion that her face doesn't look quite right. So I really hope Flair saw that, like some people complaining about the figure and touch it up a little bit because I really would rather just the figure be good than save money on a figure that I'm not really that thrilled with. Next up is Pretty Derby's Rice Shower, made by Alter, a 1-7 scale, roughly like 20,000 yen. Now this was a figure I was very close to pre-ordering, but there's just so many other figures that out-prioritize her that I had to put her lower on the list and eventually just not get her. But I might when she comes out, if she drops in price or if I'm not really pre-ordering too many figures at the time, but I think she comes out in July which is right after a very rough month in June. So it's not looking great for her, but we'll see. I still like this figure a lot. She's a darling. I think the outfit is super cute, but I don't know. I don't really need it. So I'm gonna wait until she comes out. Another Azur Lane figure, another Bremerton figure. This time it's the Anniversary Daki Makoto version from Alpha Max. Now this is a one fourth scale and she's roughly like 34 to 36,000 yen and it certainly activates the neurons in my brain. However, it's just so big 
And again, this is coming out at a very bad time in July. But my God, is this figure bonkers. Like if it was a 1-7 scale, I would have just pre-ordered it. But because it's a 1-4 scale, I have to be a little careful because of space and money. But I think this is kind of perfect outside of her hair. I think her hair looks a little cheap. But uh, they nailed the body, which is like the most important part. And the outfit's very sexy. I don't know. We'll see. I'm a bit undecided at the moment just because this one just went up for pre-order. This next figure I literally just added to my wish list after making the last pre-order roundup, and that is the Idolmaster Shiny Colors Mayuzumi Fuyuko off the record version from Alter for about 23,000 yen. I just can't get over how smug this girl looks. Like, it's impressive how they've captured her personality in this figure, and also her outfit is very cute. I kind of like everything about this figure outside of that weird crinkly pillow, but besides that, if this drops in price, it's probably gonna end up in my collection. Shuten Doji Halloween version from Q's Q. Now this one doesn't make sense, right? How is this not in my pre-order list? I love Shuten Doji. Well, it's just because a lot of these fake Grand Order figures do drop in price, and this one's pretty expensive, like roughly 36,000 yen. So it just doesn't feel like I need to. Now, if I'm wrong, if she becomes rare, then I'll just, you know, own up to that. I'll pay the retail price. I'll pay the aftermarket price. If I'm messed up, it's on me. That's fine. But right now, it feels like I just don't need to. But yeah, I love this totally gaudy design for Shuten Doji. It's amazing in my eyes. Like, I really want it, but playing the waiting game. Next up is Mira from Wonderful Works. This is a Tori Domino design known for making very voluptuous characters. I just talked about MX Chan in my last unboxing, and that figure was through the roof good, so I felt like maybe I should get another figure that he designed, yet I feel like out of everything I've pre-ordered or wanted, this just feels like I really don't need it. Next up is Bochi the Rock's Hitori, made by Aniplex. Now this is one that I really like in terms of just like design, in terms of the composition, the colors, the fun, the dynamism. But I'm just not really sure if this one is built to last, like stability-wise. She is um, kind of suspended in midair with one support rod sticking into her back. And I just don't know if that's going to last. Like this is a better figure in my opinion than Good Smiles, but Good Smiles is not gonna give me problems down the line. This one might. So I'm just unsure. This one will probably become a little bit harder to find in the future, which is kind of making me want to pre-order it, but I, I just don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. And last up for our potential pre-orders for 2024 is none other than Marcel from Dungeon Meshi. Now, I still haven't watched this show yet, but I'm still very impressed at this figure. It's pretty expensive at 28,000 yen, but like it's packed to the brim with details. The colors are so vibrant. All these references from the show just seem super fun. And Marcia looks very cute. There's nothing about this figure I dislike. In fact, I like it more the more I look at it. However, I don't know yet. Will I like the show? Will I like the character? Only time will tell. My guess is yes. And then I will probably pre-order this one, but it's coming out at the end of the year, right when Guts and Griffith are coming out. So like, I don't know if I'm gonna really wanna spend more money at that time, but yeah, that's gonna do it for our pre-orders for 2024 video. Now you guys know what I'm buying and what I might potentially add to that list. I'm sure there'll be more. We got Mio, we got that Taiga figure. Who the hell knows what else is gonna get announced at one fest and one hobby. That's why you can't go too crazy, or at least I try not to. But either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys are pre-ordering for 2024. Don't leave me like a hundred figures in a comment. I'm not gonna be able to respond to that. Give me your top five. Let me know what you guys are most looking forward to. All right, I think that makes sense. But either way, appreciate you guys. I'll see you very soon. And until then, take care. Later.